Okay, good morning, everyone. We'll begin. First of all, I guess sound check. Are we good there in the back? Cameras. Okay, good morning. Bonjour. Acknowledge and recognize that we are on Treaty 1 territory. This is the land of the traditional, traditional territory of the Ashinaabe, Cree, OG Cree, Dakota, and Dene peoples, and the national homeland of the Red River Metis. J'aimerais reconnaître que le territoire sur lequel nous nous trouvons est visé par la traité numéro 1. Il s'agit du territoire ancestral des Nashnabi, des Cris, des Ojikri, des Dakota et des Dene, et du territoire national des Métis de la Rivière Rouge. Thank you for coming today. Merci d'être venu aujourd'hui. My name is Sergeant Paul Manegue of the Manitoba RCMP Media Relations Unit. Je suis le Sergeant Paul Manegue du service des relations avec les médias de la GRC du Manitoba. With me today is CBSA Chief of Operations Ken McGregor, CBC, sorry, CBSA District Director Russ Lapointe, and Inspector Joel Tellis from Manitoba RCMP Federal Policing. Je suis accompagné aujourd'hui par le chef de l'ASFC, Ken McGregor, le directeur de l'ASFC, Russ Lapointe, et par l'inspecteur Joe Tellis de la police fédérale de la GRC au Manitoba. Chief Ken McGregor will speak on a recent meth seizure which took place at the Boise Vein Port of Entry. Director Russell Point will then provide those remarks in French. Le chef Ken McGregor parlera d'une récente saisie du méthamphétamine qui a lieu aux portes d'entrée de Boise Vein. Le directeur de Russell Point présentera ensuite ses remarques en français. Inspector Joel Tellis will speak on Manitoba RCMP's assistance to the seizure and the continuing investigation. L'inspecteur Joel Tellis parlera de l'aide apportée par la GRC du Manitoba à cette saisie et de la poursuite de l'enquête. After the guests have concluded their remarks, there will be an opportunity for questions. Une fois que chacun aura terminé son intervention, vous aurez l'occasion de poser des questions. I'd now like to invite CBSA Chief of Operations Ken McGregor to the podium. Je voudrais inviter le chef de l'ASFC Ken McGregor à prendre la parole. Uh, good morning, members of the media and guests. I'm very pleased to, hear, to be here today to speak about the role of the Canada Border Services Agency in a recent and significant seizure of illegal narcotics. I'll start by reviewing the details that have been provided in the press release. The CBSA and the RCMP are committed to safeguarding our country by keeping illegal and dangerous drugs from reaching our communities. On January 14th, CBSA officers examined a commercial truck at the Bois Vane Port of Entry in southern Manitoba. Officers discovered and seized 406 kilograms of suspected methamphetamine, which is approximately 4 million illicit doses with a street value of over $50 million. This is the largest CBSA seizure of illegal narcotics to ever occur in the Prairie region. The driver was carrying a shipment destined to Winnipeg. He was arrested by the CBSA and transferred to the Manitoba RCMP along with the suspected narcotics. The driver has been charged with importation of methamphetamine and possession of a controlled substance for the purpose of trafficking, both contrary to the Controlled Drugs and Substances Act. The individual is scheduled to appear in Manitoba law courts on February 1st, 2024. I will now turn it over to District Director Russ LaPointe. Bonjour, hello. L'Agence des services frontaliers du Canada, ASFC, et la Gendarmerie royale du Canada, GRC, s'engagent à protéger notre pays en empêchant les drogues illégales et dangereuses d'atteindre nos collectivités. Le 14 janvier 2024, les agents de l'ASFC ont découvert et saisi 406,2 kg de méthamphétamine présumée, soit environ 4 millions de doses illicites d'une valeur de plus de 50 millions à la suite de l'examen d'un camion commercial au point d'entrée de bois dans le sud du Manitoba. Il s'agit de la plus importante saisie de stupéfiants illégaux réalisés dans la région des Prairies. Le chauffeur transportait une cargaison destinée à Winnipeg. Le conducteur a été arrêté par l'ASFC et transféré à la GRC du Manitoba avec les stupéfiants présumés. Le conducteur du camion a été inculpé dans les infractions suivantes. 
importation de méthamphétamines en violation de la loi réglementant certaines drogues et autres substances et possession d'une substance réglementée dans le but d'en faire le trafic en violation de la loi réglementant certaines drogues et autres substances. L'homme doit comparaître devant la Cour de justice du Manitoba le 1er février 2024. Merci. Thank you, Chief McGregor. Director Lapointe, I'd now like to invite, uh, excuse me, Inspector, Inspector Joe Tellis from the Manitoba RCMP Federal Policing to the podium. Good morning, and thank you for being here with us. This is an extraordinary seizure for the Canada Border Services Agency, and I congratulate the border agents who use our training and, and experience to stop the shipment from reaching its destination. Without a doubt, their work has made an impact and will stem the availability of this incredibly dangerous drug, a drug that has already impacted so many lives. The seizure only occurred a couple of weeks ago and given the amount of the drugs that were located, we have a lot of investigative work to do. Normally, this type of seizure is the result of an extensive years-long investigation. In this instance, we have a massive quantity of drugs and now need to work backwards and look at every detail. We have gathered some preliminary information so far and know now some of the details about the transport. The transport. However, we are, not, we are not in a position to share this information publicly at this time. The only thing we can confirm is that the truck was on, on, a, on a route that originated from the United States. And as we have heard on the evening of January 14th, the truck was stopped at and examined by CBSA at the Boyce Van point of entry and the illicit drugs were located. Due to the site of the seizure, officers from federal policing were notified and immediately attended the scene. On scene, they arrested Komal Preet Sidhu, a 29-year-old male from Winnipeg. Our, investigation are now, our investigators are now working with CBSA and other partners across Canada as well as international law enforcement agencies to find out about the shipment. Every aspect of the semi's journey from the United States to Boyce Frank, as well as its final destination in Winnipeg has been thoroughly investigated. The origin and size of the shipment leads us to believe that this involved organized crime at the local, national, and international level. While the drugs were distant, destined for Winnipeg, we also strongly believe that they would have been distributed to communities across Manitoba and possibly to locations across Western Canada and into Ontario. Large illicit drug shipments such as this one and the subsequent distribution of these drugs is closely associated with increased violence in our communities. As street gangs and organized crime networks fight over territory and who gets to sell to the users. This is why this, this seizure is so important. It will make a difference to many lives and communities throughout our country. By removing these drugs from circulation, it has a direct impact on the safety of Canadians. Once again, this large seizure, sorry, once again, with such a large seizure, there are no doubts, many questions. Be assured that this investigation is only starting and we are committed to working with our law enforcement partners across North, Cap North America to find the answers. Thank you. I will now uh, say it in French. Bonjour et merci de votre présence. Il s'agit d'une saisie extraordinaire pour l'Agence des services frontaliers du Canada et je félicite les agents formés et expérimentés à la frontière qui ont empêché cette expédition d'arriver à destination. Leur travail à sans contredit eut une incidence et réduira 
la disponibilité de cette drogue extrêmement dangereuse, une drogue qui a déjà eu un impact négatif sur de nombreuses vies. Cette saisie a eu lieu il y a quelques semaines seulement, et nous avons beaucoup de travail d'enquête à faire étant donné la quantité de drogues saisies découvertes. Normalement, ce type de saisie est le résultat d'une enquête approfondie qui dure des années. Dans ce cas, nous avons une quantité massive de drogues et nous devons maintenant travailler à rebours et à examiner tous les détails. Nous avons déjà recueilli quelques informations préliminaires et nous connaissons maintenant certains détails concernant le transport. Cependant, nous ne sommes pas en mesure de partager cette information avec le public pour le moment. La seule chose que nous pouvons confirmer, c'est que le camion effectuait un trajet en provenance des États-Unis. Puis, comme nous l'avons entendu, le soir du 14 janvier, le camion a été arrêté et examiné par l'ASFC au point d'entrée de Boisvin et des drogues illicites ont été découvertes. Étant donné la taille de la saisie, les agents de la police fédérale ont été avisés et se sont immédiatement rendus sur place. Comme Alfred Sidhu, un homme de 29 ans de Winnipeg, a été arrêté. Nos enquêteurs collaborent maintenant avec l'ASFC et d'autres partenaires au Canada et de même qu'avec des organismes d'application de la loi étranger afin d'obtenir plus d'informations sur cette expédition. Tous les aspects du voyage du semi des États-Unis à Boisvin et de sa destination finale à Winnipeg font l'objet d'une enquête approfondie. L'origine et la taille de la production et de l'expédition nous incitent à croire que le crime organisé local, national et international est impliqué. Même si la drogue était destinée à Winnipeg, nous croyons fermement qu'elle qu aurait été distribuée dans les collectivités partout au Manitoba et possiblement ailleurs en, dans l'ouest du pays et en Ontario. Cette saisie est très importante car elle aura une incidence sur la vie, dans la vie de plusieurs personnes et dans plusieurs collectivités au Canada. Les expéditions de drogues illicites de cette taille et la vente de ces drogues sont intimement liées à la violence accrue dans les villes où les gangs et le crime organisé se disputent le territoire. C'est pourquoi il est si important de retirer ces drogues de la circulation. Cela a une incidence directe sur la sécurité des Canadiens et Canadiennes. Une fois de plus, il est certain qu'une saisie de cette taille soulève beaucoup de, de questions. Soyez assurés que cette enquête ne fait que commencer et que nous sommes engagés à collaborer avec nos partenaires d'application de la loi partout en Amérique du Nord pour trouver les réponses. Merci. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Well, now I have some questions uh, if availability with Chief uh, McGregor and Inspector Tellus, but please be mindful the infant, the investigations in its early stages, so there's not much information at this point that can be released. I'd like to come forward. <clears throat> Sorry, I just had a couple more things. Uh, just wanted to go over our point of, from the seizure. The CBSA uses a risk assessment approach for all commercial loads coming in through Canada's land borders in order to identify any potentially suspicious shipments, the vast majority of which are processed and authorized um, by the CBSA to enter Canada without delay. Based on indicators, however, this truck was selected for further examination. It was during that examination that our officers found narcotics inside of several large suitcases, as you can see on the screen here. Keeping illegal narcotics and other contraband goods out of our communities is a key priority for the CBSA. The agency stays current on global trends and patterns, and our officers are highly trained in examination and investigative techniques to analyze risks so they can intercept prohibited goods. It's important to recognize also that the CBSA works closely with many domestic and international law enforcement partners to detect and prevent illegal drug smuggling. We value the strong working relationship that we share with the RCMP here in Manitoba. And on a final note, I would like to acknowledge the CBSA officers involved in this significant seizure. Their work on this case was exemplary. Thanks to them, 4 million doses of methamphetamine are staying off our streets. Thank you all for your ongoing commitment 
keeping our borders secure and our community safe. Your efforts are well recognized. Thank you. Question for Mr. McGregor. Sure. Can you just describe what kind of commercial truck this was? Was it a like a semi trailer or just like a, a different kind of commercial truck? Yeah, it was a semi truck and tractor, tractor and trailer. With one trailer? Or? Yep. Okay. And how do you know the, uh, the methamphetamine was destined for Winnipeg? Uh, the load was destined for Winnipeg. We're still investigating to find out where the drugs were going, where the RCMP would be. Yep. Was there anything else in the vehicle? Personal effects. And is this all the methamphetamine that was um, seized? With the this seizure? is the seizure, yes. How, how do you know this is the largest in prairie history? Uh, just to look by backdating and going through our CBSA databases. Yep. What would the second largest be? Um, I'm not positive, but I think it's a 230 some kilo seizure out of Coots, Alberta this past summer. Do you know how it compares to the national level? I don't for certain, no. It, it's one of the biggest in the country at a land border. I, I can't say for sure it's the biggest, but it's one of the biggest for sure. So this sounds like it was a routine stop then? Um, like you didn't have any uh, intel to say that this truck was coming through this port of entry at a certain time? Yeah, at times we use uh, databases and lots of different type of technology. In this particular case, the officers uh, discovered the suitcases were in the, in the trailer itself. Each suitcase contained the individually wrapped packages, as you can see there. Uh, in total, there's 200 packages and the combined weight was 406.2 kilograms. Um, is this commercial truck, is it linked to a commercial trucking company? Yes. Is that based in Canada or in the U.S.? I don't know. I'll leave that to you, Joe. Uh, we believe that uh, from, from the information that we have uh, gathered at, at this point in time, it is linked to a, a Manitoba a company, uh, but that's, that's all we can share for, uh, at this moment. Is that company subject to investigation kind of related to this, Mr. Collins? Our investigators will have been in contact with that company and we'll be uh, in contact with everybody else that, that needs to be spoken to. So at this point in time, like I said, this is the, the onset of the investigation and we have a lot of work that, that needs to be done. Um, you said that typically a seizure of this kind is the result of a, a long investigation. In, in this case, we're kind of working backward. H how does that affect the investigation process? Is it expedited? Is it complicated? Or w where does it fall? Well, it's a little bit more complicated because now, like I, like I said, we have to work backwards. Instead of usually what we do is uh, we, we work the investigation and, and it leads to the, to the seizure. This time around, we, we have the commodity, but we need to find out exactly where, where it came from and where, uh, what they, they intended to do with it. Um, Inspector Tellis was the man arrested, uh, I think you identified the person as 29-year-old at Pamel Sidhu. Um, were they an employee of this company from Manitoba? Uh, at this point in time, uh, we, we believe so. But uh, again, this is something that we, we need to confirm. We, we need to continue the, the investigation. And that person was alone at the time? Yes. Oui, allez-y. Alors, la, 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 euh, la F, c'est la quoi? La S, la SF, c'est à une manière de, 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 de faire leur travail. Alors, ça, c'est n'est pas quelque chose que nous autres, on, 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 on connaît. Mais d'après ce que monsieur a, a dit, C'est un travail qui a, qui a été fait par euh, les agents. Ils ont arrêté le, le camion, l'ont examiné et euh, pendant qu'ils ont fait l'examination, ils ont trouvé euh, les, les, les sacs et, et puis en, en trouvant les sacs, là, après ça, ils ont continué à faire leur enquête et puis ils nous ont appelés. Uh, 
yes, I probably have that information somewhere, but I didn't bring it with me, so no, I can't confirm when it crossed. Yes, eventually it will be destroyed. Uh, Inspector, I know you said that, um, you know, at, at this point, RCMP can't say where the truck was, was coming from. That's part of the investigation. Um, do police know where uh, the methamphetamine originated from at all? Um, any ideas at this point? That, that, that is something that we'll try to, uh, to figure out uh, during the investigation. All I can say is that the, the truck was coming from uh, the the, the uh, United States. And do police believe the methamphetamine was all destined for Winnipeg? The 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 truck itself was destined for for Winnipeg, and as I mentioned, we believe that um, the drugs itself could have uh, w probably be d distributed in in Manitoba and. Uh, Western Canada and possibly Ontario. Um, just a question for Mr. McGregor. You said, I mean, we have a, a huge seizure today. There was another significant seizure in, in Prince Alberta that you pointed to. Um, are we seeing more kind of large shipments trying to cross Canadian borders like this? Yeah, I don't have any information to, to suggest that I have the actual data. Um, but yeah, we're constantly seeing more and we're, we're working to adapt and notice and pick up the patterns and learn the trends that are going on and keep up to date with them so we can intercept. And do we know what's fueling that? Is it just the, the, uh, you know, a market for drugs in Canada? Or have you know, criminal organizations kind of identified something here where they know that they can ship um, drugs across the border or something to that effect? I wouldn't be able to speak to that, sorry. Vu qu'on est au, au début de, de l'enquête, il est très dur de, de dire si c'est lié à d'autres choses. Um, mais ce que, je, ce que je peux dire, c'est que à cause de la quantité, définitivement, nous croyons que, que c'est lié uh, à du crime organisé. Uh, on, on croit que c'est lié à, au, au, au niveau local, national et, et, et possiblement international. Mr. McGregor, what time of day did the um, uh, bust happen on January 14th? Do you have that information? I believe the truck arrived shortly after 10 or right around 10 p.m. And that port of entry is 24 hours? It is, correct. Okay, thank you, everybody. I'll conclude the uh, press conference. If you need to grab some more photos before you leave, uh, that please do so now, and thank you very much.